Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sports Fall Jersey. Joe Archino back here and this college football opening weekend obviously had a lot of surprises and to most people, Wisconsin beating LSU 16 to 14 probably was one of the ones that topped their list and to me it was one of those things where I was surprised that LSU lost the game, but when you look at what LSU is and what they've become, the way that they lost isn't very surprising. Obviously, Wisconsin came out and they would take the lead going into halftime, up 6 nothing. LSU responds in a big way in the, four, in the third quarter. They put 14 on the board and they end up losing 16-14, to shut out in the fourth quarter. But it's one of those things where LSU has so many good and talented positional skill players on the offense, of course at running back and at the receiver position. But the one area they continue to not be able to put a guy they can trust in and have certainty in is at quarterback. Brandon Harris, last season, who was their quarterback, started the season on a pretty good foot, showed a pretty good amount of balance in the passing game. Not great in the passing game, but enough. And then, of course, his, what his MO is, is his athleticism and his, and his feet. But in this game, he showed regression. And when you're LSU, you return as many starters as they did for last season. Your expectations are going to be extremely high. And just when I came out and watched this first half, I mean, Wisconsin just looked like they could match LSU toe-to-toe -to -toe physically. They just didn't look phased. And, I mean, I think that's usually the biggest thing you can tell, that there's a difference between an SEC opponent and anyone else's. When you watch the, to the two sides go up against each other, especially the defense, Offensive line and the offensive lines, I didn't really see that big of a difference. And to me, when you're an SEC team, you better be able to see that there's a difference there because you have the best, the biggest, the strongest that you're able to recruit when you're the SEC. And I just did not see that in this game. But the biggest thing of all is quarterback. It's amazing because Les Miles is as good as it comes in the business at recruiting and bringing all this talent. But the one area he just seems to not be able to find is at quarterback. And Brandon Harris, I mean, I, the whole the whole loss isn't on him, of course, but the LSU's not going anywhere this season with the schedule they play if they don't get meaningful play from the quarterback position. Last season, it really, the crux for them, it was that and the combination of Leonard Fournette just falling off the face of the earth after the Alabama game. And Fournette obviously struggled to trip, get off on the right foot in this game. Ended up with 138 rushing yards, no touchdowns, but he did kind of have a stronger second half and had some good runs in there. But it does come down to the passing game, and LSU just doesn't have one. Brandon Harris, again, you have to be concerned if you're a Tigers fan because you would have expected in year two him to show a jump, a leap forward. I mean, we see it all the time in the SEC. You don't really always have those traditional passes, strong quarterback play. A lot of the national champions, I mean, Alabama has won all these titles, and it's never been behind strong quarterback play. It's been against uh, with quarterbacks who knew what their job was, occasionally had to make plays, and largely just were game managers in that type of role. And then we've seen some guys, new kids on the block, like a Nick Marshall, who wasn't the strongest passer, but because of the offense he was in, he was able to occasionally get some good throws in and use his legs. But Brandon Harris, to me, I was very, very upset with how the performance I saw from him because it looked like regression to me, and that should not happen for LSU because it's such a waste with all the talent that they have on offense, and you have a quarterback who just can't get the ball in any of these guys' hands. And when Leonard Fournette doesn't get going, it really stalls that entire offense as a whole. I'm not worried about LSU's defense. It wasn't the strongest showing for them in their first game, but you know how hard and physical they play. They're going to be just fine, and that defense is what got them back in that game. And That's why it wasn't a surprise. It was the typical MO for LSU. They get back in this game on defense, and they are unable to win it because they don't have the talent on offense. That, that really has been the story for LSU. It really was for them last season, and in their first game, that's what it looked like, certainly. And Wisconsin obviously has a lot to be proud of. I don't think a lot of people gave them too much of a chance going into this game. But 
there was a lot of controversy coming into this game. It was an offseason filled with a lot of talk and a lot of noise for LSU, and that talk and that noise certainly caught up to them in this game. But Bart Houston for Wisconsin, he showed a little bit of promise there. The two interceptions, obviously not great. No touchdowns, 205 yards, 19, uh, 10, uh, 9, uh, 31 attempts, 19 completions. Certainly for him, he's a guy that I, I kind of caught my attention. I want to see how his season continues to progress, but the biggest story here, obviously, is for LSU. It's the typical thing we've continued to see from them. They have all that talent on defense. It got them back in this game, but they can't win it because they just don't have that talent at the quarterback position. And Leonard Fournette, obviously, is going to be expected to carry a huge load for them. And if he can't get going early in games this season, I don't know what's going to happen for LSU. But until the next time, Jersey Joe Archino here with the Sports Vault. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe Archino and on Instagram, Jersey underscore Joe underscore Chino. And I'll catch everybody in the next episode.